Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the Query Monitor functionality within SQL Diagnostic Manager. Query Monitor is one of those features that is really designed to help fill in the gaps between polling intervals. So if my SQL servers are being monitored with Diagnostic Manager at six minute intervals, there are going to be queries that are running between those polling intervals that I'm going to miss. And that's really what the Query Monitor is all about. The Query Monitor is there to help you fill in the gap between those polling intervals. Now, depending on the version of SQL Server that you're monitoring, there may be a different method of collecting these poor performing queries. On the newer versions of SQL, anything 2016 or above, we can use Query Store. So if you have Query Store enabled on databases, that can be leveraged to capture these poor performing queries. Anything 2008 or above, you could use Extended Events. And then on the older versions of SQL 2000, 2005, we would be using or only have the opportunity to use a server-side trace. Now, Trace can scare people. This is not a profiler trace. This is a server-side trace that's very, uh, very tuned for performance. So it's not something that I would be very scared of enabling. And I will say that you could use Trace on any version of SQL Server that Diagnostic Manager is monitoring. Now down below is what you would define as a long-running or poor-performing query, depending on what your requirements are. I say long-running because that's generally what I'm looking for. But you have the opportunity to look at disk, both from a read and write perspective as well as CPU. I also do like to point out for new users that zero means it's not something I'm concerned with. So, and these are additive. So if I said, you know, 1000 milliseconds and maybe 800 milliseconds of CPU at a minimum, right? So that would be, both of those things would need to be true before that data is gonna be displayed within the viewer. So generally, uh, I look at time, but again, it, it's really dependent on your specific SQL Server. It's kind of hidden, but down below there's an advanced button, and the advanced button will let you filter in or out certain applications, databases, or text that you want to focus on exclusively or exclude. So there, there is some options to fine-tune this even more. Now, one of the things that you can do to enable Query Monitor if you don't want to run that 24-7 Obviously, you can manually turn it on when required, but there are alert action responses around query monitoring. So if you want to enable query monitor when something bad is happening, uh, I'll, I'll show you an example here. So I have this configured for query weight monitoring, but I could change it and say, we're not actually concerned about query weights in this example, we're concerned about query monitoring. So query monitor, we want to enable that, and maybe we want to run that for uh, an hour, right? So when, in my case, SQL Server CPU and OS disk percent get above a certain threshold, in our case indicating it's critical on production servers. Uh, maybe we'll go with just 60 minutes instead of 600. That query monitor is going to enable itself. So you have some options there. I will say, though, that in most environments, people run this all the time. It's not really one of those, those uh, features that I think I would be too terribly concerned with around performance. Now, there are three different views around query monitoring, signature mode, statement mode, and query history. They're all basically sharing the same data. It's just different ways to look at it. And I always start with signature mode. One of the biggest benefits of signature mode is this column here called occurrence. So right now I'm sorting by duration. So the longest running query that we've seen is at the top of the list around 40 seconds. Now that's nice, but is that really what I'm looking for? You know. This thing only ran once. The occurrence column is indicating one run. If we sort by occurrence though, I have other queries that maybe are more important to me. For example, this guy here got picked up 783 times with an average duration of 1.7 seconds. So over the, you know, the time frame in my case, which is 48 hours, over the last 48 hours, this is actually the longest running query if I add up every single run of it, right? So there might be different reasons that you're looking at poor performing queries. And one of the nice things about the signature mode is it lets you distinguish between something that might just be long running once or twice, or in this case, something that's long running 700 times. From here, um, I can drill down and say show query history. So query history is actually going to show me all the different runs. I, I, I happen to choose this one because I didn't want to look at 700 runs. I want to look at something a little bit smaller. But the idea is that I'm now able to not look at just the average duration of this particular signature, which this is the statement that we are running. Um, I'm actually looking at the individual runs that we've picked up. 
All right, so that's one way that I use that. I, I can generally drill down from a signature into its actual history. And then from a statement mode perspective, that's just going to list out all the statements that have been picked up, right? So that doesn't have any real filtering in it by default. And as you can see, it can take a bit of time. I have hundreds of queries in here that are being picked up. But again, I can, in this particular view, I'm no longer looking at averages. I'm looking at actual CPU time, actual reads, actual writes, actual durations. Um, if you wanted more detail on the query, you can say show query text, which would pull up the actual query that was being run. And I will also point out that if you wanted to run this individual query through our prescriptive analysis engine, you can hit the Diagnose button. By hitting Diagnose, it's going to drop you over to the analysis screen. And then what's going on behind the scenes is it's taking that statement, in my case, that it saw, and it ran it through an optimizer. And when it, what it came back with in this particular case was a recommendation that we need to work on the where clause. Um, so it's saying that the function probe on column idea form users ID um, may be causing a table scan. So it's recommended that we consider redesigning the where clause to prevent index suppression and performance degradation. Now where's the problem? There's a little link up here at the top, show problem, that will actually pull up that statement and show me what I need to work on. It, it's This is a pretty simple use case, but um, the point is that those queries that we design or pick up within Query Monitor are going to be available within the prescription analysis functionality. I will also say that one of the ways that I often will look at poor performing queries that have been picked up in Query Monitor is through something like a top queries report. So if I need to take those worst performers and share them with a dev team on a regular basis, I might come in and build a, like a weekly worst performing query report. In this case, we're gonna say the top five run that, make sure it's the data set that we're looking for, and then use the scheduling functionality that reaches out to SSRS and build subscriptions to automate this to be emailed out to, to the, the team that's working on this particular application set. But the cool thing about this view is that when we say top queries, again, that's somewhat subjective. You know, Are we talking about the longest runners? Are we talking about the most frequent? Are we talking about the most reads? This report's gonna break that all down for you. So the top queries by frequency, so this select statement was picked up, uh, 3,000 times over the last week, um, you know, and then we come down further. These are the longest runners that we picked up, the the ones that are using the most CPU, etc. So this information in the top queries report is actually coming from that query monitor view, which is is really designed to help me fill in those gaps between pulling pulling intervals around worst performing queries. So with that, I appreciate your time. And obviously, if you guys need help with anything, contact your account managers here at IDR. We're always happy to help. Thank you.